In Eastern Orthodox Church history especially within Russian Orthodox Church, the Old Believers or Old Ritualists Russian, Starovery or Starovretsi, Starovery or Starovretsi, are Eastern Orthodox Christians who maintain the liturgical and ritual practices of the Eastern Orthodox Church as they existed prior to the reforms of Patriarch Nikon of Moscow between 1652 and 1666. Resisting the accommodation of Russian piety to the contemporary forms of Greek Orthodox worship, these Christians were anathematized, together with their ritual, in a synod of 1666–1667, producing a division in Eastern Europe, between the Old Believers and those who followed the State Church in its condemnation of the Old Rite. Russian speakers refer to the schism itself as Raskol, Russian, Raskol etymologically indicating a cleaving apart. Topic. Introductory summary of origins In 1652, Patriarch Nikon (1605–1681), Patriarch of the Russian Orthodox Church from 1652 to 1658, introduced a number of ritual and textual revisions with the aim of achieving uniformity between the practices of the Russian and Greek Orthodox churches. Nikon, having noticed discrepancies between Russian and Greek rites and texts, ordered an adjustment of the Russian rites to align with the Greek ones of his time. In doing so, according to the old believers, Nikon acted without adequate consultation with the clergy and without gathering a council. After the implementation of these revisions, the church anathematized and suppressed—with the support of Muscovite state power. The prior liturgical rite itself, as well as those who were reluctant to pass to the revised rite. Those who maintained fidelity to the existing rite endured severe persecutions from the end of the 17th century until the beginning of the 20th century as schismatics. Russian, Raskolnikai Raskolniki. They became known as Old Ritualists, a name introduced during the reign of Catherine the Great. They continued to call themselves simply. Orthodox Christians. Topic: The Russian Orthodox Church before Nikon. The installation of a Metropolitan of Kiev and all Russia, but resident in Moscow, by a Council of Russian Bishops in 1448 without consent from the Ecumenical Patriarch of Constantinople initiated the effective independence of the Eastern Orthodox Church in the Grand Duchy of Moscow. By then, apart from Muslim and Jewish minorities and pagan subject peoples, the Russian people were Christianized, observing church festivals and marking births, marriages and deaths with orthodox rituals. However, many popular religious practices were of pagan origin or marked by superstition, disorder or drunkenness. The main objectives of reformers in the 16th century, many from the secular white clergy, were to outlaw pagan rituals and beliefs and to standardize the liturgy throughout the Muscovite realm. This resulted in the holding of the Stoglavy Synod, a Russian church council in 1551, whose decrees formed the basis of orthodox ritual and liturgy in the late 16th and early 17th centuries. This synod condemned many popular religious practices. In addition, while stressing the need for accurate copying of sacred documents, it also approved of traditional Russian liturgical practices that differed from contemporary Greek ones. The origins of reform During the reign of Alexei Mikhailovich 1645 the young Tsar and his confessor, Stefan Vonifacev, sponsored a group, mainly composed of white, non-monastic clergy and known as the Zealots of Piety. These included the Archpriest Avakim as a founder member and the future Patriarch Nikon, who joined in 1649. Their original aim was to revitalize the parishes through effective preaching, the orderly celebration of the liturgy, and enforcement of the Church's moral teachings. 
To ensure that the liturgy was celebrated correctly, its original and authentic form had to be established, but the way that Nikon did this caused disputes between him and other reformers. In 1646, Nikon first met Tsar Alexei, who immediately appointed him Archimandrite of the Novospassky Monastery in Moscow. In 1649, Nikon was consecrated as the Metropolitan of Novgorod and, in 1652, he became Patriarch of Moscow. During his time in Novgorod, Nikon began to develop his view that the responsibility for the spiritual health of Russia lay with senior church leaders, not the Tsar. When he became Patriarch, he started to reorganize the Church's administration so it was wholly under his own control. In 1649, a Greek delegation, headed by Patriarch Pazios of Jerusalem, arrived in Moscow and tried to convince the Tsar and Nikon that current Greek liturgical practices were authentically Orthodox and that Russian usages that differed from them were local innovations. This led to a heated debate between the visiting Greeks and many Russian clerics who believed that, by accepting the decrees of the Council of Florence, the Greek Patriarchate had compromised its authority and forfeited any right to dictate to Russia on liturgical matters. Tsar Alexei, Nikon and some of the zealots of piety decided that best way to revitalize the Russian Church was to conform with the usages of the Greek Church and accept the authority of the Patriarch of Constantinople. Reforms of Patriarch Nikon By the middle of the 17th century, Greek and Russian church officials, including Patriarch Nikon of Moscow, had noticed discrepancies between contemporary Russian and Greek usages. They reached the conclusion that the Russian Orthodox Church had, as a result of errors of incompetent copyists, developed rites and liturgical books of its own that had significantly deviated from the Greek originals. Thus, the Russian Orthodox Church had become dissonant with the other Orthodox churches. The unrevised Muscovite service books derived from a different, and older, Greek recension than that which was used in the current Greek books, which had been revised over the centuries, and contained innovations. Nikon wanted to have the same right in the Russian Tsardom those ethnically Slavic lands now the territories of Ukraine and Belarus that were then part of Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, to attract local Orthodox rebels. Their right was closer to the Greek than that in the Muscovite realm. Nikon did not accept the existence of two different rites in the same church, supported by Tsar Alexei R. 1645–1676, Nikon carried out some preliminary liturgical reforms. In 1652, he convened a synod and exhorted the clergy on the need to compare Russian typikon, eucologian, and other liturgical books with their Greek counterparts. Monasteries from all over Russia received requests to send examples to Moscow to have them subjected to a comparative analysis. Such a task would have taken many years of conscientious research and could hardly have given an unambiguous result, given the complex development of the Russian liturgical texts over the previous centuries and the lack of textual historiographic techniques at the time. Without waiting for the completion of any comparative analysis, Nikon overrode the decrees of the Stoglavy Synod and ordered the printing of new editions of the Russian Psalter, Missal and a pamphlet justifying his liturgical changes. The new Psalter and Missal altered the most frequently used words and visible gestures in the liturgy, including the pronunciation of Christ's name and making the sign of the cross. In addition, the overbearing manner in which he forced the changes through turned Abakim and others of the zealots of piety against him. Their protests led to their excommunication and exile and, in some cases, imprisonment or execution. It was not disputed by the reformers that the Russian texts should be corrected by reference to the most ancient Greek, but also Slavonic, manuscripts, although they also considered that many traditional Russian ceremonial practices were acceptable. In addition, the hastily published new editions of the service books contained internal inconsistencies, and had to be reprinted several times in quick succession. 
Rather than being revised according to ancient Slavonic and Greek manuscripts, the new liturgical editions had actually been translated from modern Greek editions printed in Catholic Venice. The locum tenens for Patriarch Pitarum of Moscow convened the 1666 Great Moscow Synod, which brought Patriarch Makarios III Zaim of Antioch, Patriarch Pazios of Alexandria, and many bishops to Moscow. Some scholars allege that the visiting patriarchs each received both 20,000 rubles in gold and furs for their participation. This council officially established the reforms and anathematized not only all those opposing the innovations but the old Russian books and rites themselves as well. As a side effect of condemning the past of the Russian Orthodox Church and her traditions, the innovations appeared to weaken the messianic theory depicting Moscow as the Third Rome. Instead of the guardian of Orthodox faith, Moscow seemed an accumulation of serious liturgical mistakes. It is argued that changing the wording of the Eighth Article of the Nicene Creed was one of the very few alterations that could be seen as a genuine correction, rather than aligning the texts of Russian liturgical books and practices, customs and even vestments with the Greek versions that Nikon considered were universally applicable norms. Nikon also attacked Russian church rituals as erroneous, and even in some cases heretical, in comparison with their contemporary Greek equivalents. This went beyond the recommendation of Patriarch Pazios of Jerusalem, who suggested that differences in ritual did not of themselves indicate error, accepting the possibility that differences have developed over time. He urged Nikon to use discretion in attempting to enforce complete uniformity with Greek practice. Nevertheless, both Patriarch and Tsar wished to carry out their reforms, although their endeavors may have had as much or more political motivation as religious. Several authors on this subject point out that Tsar Alexei, encouraged by his military success in the Russo Polish War, 1654 to conquer West Russian provinces and Ukraine, developed ambitions of becoming the liberal of the Orthodox areas which at that time formed part of the Ottoman Empire. They also mention the role of the Near East Patriarchs, who actively supported the idea of the Russian Tsar becoming the liberator of all Orthodox Christians and who suggested that Patriarch Nikon might become the new Patriarch of Constantinople. Topic. Main alterations introduced by Patriarch Nikon The numerous changes in both texts and rites occupied approximately 400 pages. Old believers present the following as the most crucial changes. Today's readers might perceive these alterations as trivial, but the faithful of that time saw rituals and dogmas as strongly interconnected. Church rituals had from the very beginning represented and symbolized doctrinal truth. The authorities imposed the reforms in an autocratic fashion, with no consultation of the subject people. Those who reacted against the Nikonian reforms would have objected as much to the manner of imposition as to the alterations. Changes were also often were made arbitrarily in the texts. For example, wherever the books read Christos Christ, Nikon's assistants substituted sin meaning the sun, and wherever they read sin they substituted Another example is that wherever the books read Sirkov meaning church, Nikon substituted Ram meaning temple and vice versa. According to a source sympathetic to the old believers, the incorrectly realized book revision by Nikon, owing to its speed, its range, its foreignness of sources and its offending character was bound to provoke protest, given the seriously assimilated, not only national but also the genuine orthodox identity of the Russian people. The protest was indeed global, the episcopate, the clergy, both regular and monastic, the laity and the ordinary people. Topic. Schism Opponents of the ecclesiastical reforms of Nikon emerged among all strata of the people and in relatively large numbers see Raskol. However, after the deposition of Patriarch Nikon 1658, who presented too strong a challenge to the Tsar's authority, a series of church councils officially endorsed Nikon's liturgical reforms. 
The old believers fiercely rejected all innovations, and the most radical among them maintained that the official church had fallen into the hands of the Antichrist. The old believers, under the leadership of Archpriest Avakim Petrov (1620–1682), publicly denounced and rejected all ecclesiastical reforms. The state church anathematized both the old rites and books and those who wished to stay loyal to them at the Synod of 1666. From that moment, the old believers officially lacked all civil rights. The state had the most active old believers arrested, and executed several of them including Archpriest Avakim some years later in 1682. After the schism After 1685, a period of persecutions began, including both torture and executions. Many old believers fled Russia altogether, particularly for the Grand Duchy of Lithuania, where the community exists to this day. Old believers became the dominant denomination in many regions, including the Pomors of the Russian Far North, in the Kursk region, in the Ural Mountains, in Siberia, and the Russian Far East. The 40,000-strong community of Lipovans still lives in Kilia Rayon Vikov of Ukraine and Tulcea County of Romania in the Danube Delta. By the 1910s, in the last Imperial Russian census just before the October Revolution, approximately 10% of the population of the Russian Empire said that they belonged to one of the old believer branches. Census data, government oppression could vary from relatively moderate, as under Peter the Great, reign 1682 to 1725, old believers had to pay double taxation and a separate tax for wearing a beard to intense, as under Tsar Nicholas I, reigned 1825 to 1855. The Russian Synodal State Church and the state authorities often saw old believers as dangerous elements and as a threat to the Russian state. In 1905, Tsar Nicholas II signed an act of religious freedom that ended the persecution of all religious minorities in Russia. The old believers gained the right to build churches, to ring church bells, to hold processions and to organize themselves. It became prohibited, as under Catherine the Great, reigned 1762–1796, to refer to old believers as Raskolnikai schismatics, a name they consider insulting. People often refer to the period from 1905 until 1917 as the golden age of the old faith. One can regard the Act of 1905 as emancipating the old believers, who had until then occupied an almost illegal position in Russian society. Nevertheless, some restrictions for old believers continued, for example, they were forbidden from joining the civil service. <laughs> <laughs> old believer denominations Although all old believers groups emerged as a result of opposition to the Nikonian reform, they do not constitute a single monolithic body. Despite the emphasis on invariable adherence to the pre-Nikonian traditions, the old believers feature a great diversity of groups that profess different interpretations of the church tradition and often are not in communion with each other some groups even practice re-baptism before admitting a member of another group into their midst. Since none of the bishops joined the old believers except Bishop Pavel of Kolomna, who was put to death for this, apostolically ordained priests of the old rite would have soon become extinct. Two responses appeared to this dilemma, the Popovtsi with priests, and the Bezpopovtsi priestless. Popovtsi The Popovtsi represented the more moderate conservative opposition, those who strove to continue religious and church life as it had existed before the reforms of Nikon. They recognized ordained priests from the new style Russian Orthodox Church who joined the old believers and who had denounced the Nikonian reforms. 
In 1846, they convinced Ambrose of Belia Krinitsa (1791–1863), a Greek Orthodox bishop whom Turkish pressure had removed from his see at Sarajevo, to become an old believer and to consecrate three Russian old believer priests as bishops. In 1859, the number of old believer bishops in Russia reached ten, and they established their own episcopate, the Belokrinitskaya hierarchy. Not all Popovtsi old believers recognized this hierarchy. Dissenters known as Boglopopovtsi obtained their own hierarchy in the 1920s. The priestess old believers thus manifest as two churches which share the same beliefs, but which treat each other's hierarchy as illegitimate. Popovtsi have priests, bishops and all sacraments, including the Eucharist. Belokrinitskaya hierarchy the largest Popovtsi denomination. One can refer to the Russian part of this denomination as the Belokrinitsko Soglesi the Belokrinitsky Agreement, or as the Russian Orthodox Old Right Church. Neokrasniki extinct. Novozybkovskaya hierarchy or Russian Old Orthodox Church. Boglopopovtsi extinct. Now the Russian Old Orthodox Church. Luzkane, also known as Luzkovsko Soglazy, in some places, they had no priests and so belonged to the Bezpopovsi extinct. There have also been old believer members of the Russian Catholic Church united with Rome, who would also be classed as Popovtsi. <laughs> Bezpopovtsi The Bezpopovtsi rejected the world. Where they believed the Antichrist reigned, they preached the imminent end of the world, asceticism, adherence to the old rituals and the old faith. More radical movements which already existed prior to the reforms of Nikon and where eschatological and anti-clerical sentiments were predominant, would join the Bezpopovsi old believers. The Bezpopovsi claimed that any priest or ordinary who has ever used the Nikonian rites have forfeited apostolic succession. Therefore, the true Church of Christ had ceased to exist on earth, and they therefore renounced priests and all sacraments except baptism. The Bezpopovsi movement has many sub-groups. Bezpopovsi have no priests and no Eucharist. Priestless churches, however, may elect a mentor Russian, Nastipnik, or church leader Russian, Nastotel, to lead the community and its services. Pomorian Old Orthodox Church or Danilovsky, not to be confused with Pomors, originated in North Russia, East Karelia, Archangelsk Oblast. Initially they rejected marriage and prayer for the Tsar. Nova Pomorsi, or New Pomorsi, except marriage. Staropomorsi, or Old Pomorsi, reject marriage. Fedosevsi. Society of Christian Old Believers of the Old Pomorsi Unmarried Confession, 1690s until present, deny marriage and practice cloister style asceticism. Philippians, named after their founder, Philip. They were repressed by the Russian government and so, the Filipovsti started practicing self immolation as a means for the preservation of the faith. Chasoveni from Chasovnia i.e. Chapel, a Siberian branch. The Chasoveni initially had priests, but later decided to change to a priest-less practice. Also known as Semeski in the lands east of Lake Baikal. Bezpopovsi, minor groups Apart from these major groups, many smaller groups have emerged and became extinct at various times since the end of the 17th century. Aristophsi, beginning of the 19th to the beginning of the 20th centuries, extinct from the name of the merchant Aristoph. Titlovsti, extinct in the 20th cent, emerged from Fedosevsi, supported the use of the inscription INRI Titlo upon the Orthodox cross, which other groups rejected. Troparian Confession Troparshiki, a group that commemorated the Tsar in the hymns Troparia. Daniel's Confession of the Partially Married Danilovsti Polubrashni 
Adamant confession Adamantivy, refused to use money and passports as containing the seal of Antichrist. Aaron's Confession Aronovsi, second half of the 18th century, a spin-off of the Filipovsti. Grandmother's Confession, or the self-baptized, practiced self-baptism or the baptism by midwives babushki, since a valid priesthood—in their opinion—had ceased to exist. Whole worshippers Dianiki, relinquished the use of icons and prayed to the east through a hole in the wall. Melchizedek's in Moscow and in Bashkortostan practiced a peculiar lay quasi Eucharistic right runaways Bagani or wanderers Straniki Netovsi or Saviour's Confession denied the possibility of celebrating sacraments and praying in churches the name comes from the Russian net no since they have no sacraments no Churches, no priests, etc. Topic Edenovert C. Edenovert C. Russian Edenoversi, i.e. People of the same faith. Collective Edenoversisvo agreed to become a part of the official Russian Orthodox Church while saving the old rites. First appearing in 1800, the Edenovertsi come under the Omophorion of the Russian Orthodox Church of the Moscow Patriarchate, Russian Orthodox Church outside Russia, abbreviated as ROCOR, have come into communion under different circumstances and retain being old believers in the traditional context and retain the use of the pre nikonian rituals. They can be regarded as old ritualists, but they do not count as old believers. In the traditional context. Topic: <inaudible> Validity of the reformist theory. Sources of Russian traditions. Vladimir officially converted the Eastern Slavs to Christianity in 988, and the people had adopted Greek Orthodox liturgical practices. At the end of the 11th century, the efforts of St. Theodosius of the Caves in Kiev, Feodosij Kievopekoske d. 1074 introduced the so-called Studi Typikon to Russia. This Typikon, essentially, a guidebook for liturgical and monastic life, reflected the traditions of the urban monastery of Studios in Constantinople. The Studite Typicon predominated throughout the western part of the Byzantine Empire and was accepted throughout the Russian lands. In the end of the 14th century through the work of Cyprian, Metropolitan of Moscow and Kiev, the Studite liturgical practices were gradually replaced in Russia with the so-called Jerusalem Typicon or the Typicon of St. Sabas. Originally, an adaptation of the Studite liturgy to the customs of Palestinian monasteries. The process of gradual change of typica would continue throughout the 15th century and, because of its slow implementation, met with little resistance—unlike Nikon's reforms, conducted with abruptness and violence. However, in the course of the 15th—17th centuries, Russian scribes continued to insert some studied material into the general shape of Jerusalem Typicon. This explains the differences between the modern version of the Typicon, used by the Russian Orthodox Church, and the pre nikonian Russian recension of Jerusalem Typicon, called Oko Sokovno Rus, Eye of the Church. This pre nikonian version, based on the Moscow printed editions of 1610, 1633 and 1641, continues to be used by modern old believers. However, in the course of the polemics against old believers, the official Russian Orthodox Church often claimed the discrepancies, which emerged in the texts between the Russian and the Greek churches, as Russian innovations, errors, or arbitrary translations. This charge of Russian innovation reappeared repeatedly in the textbooks and anti rascal treatises and catechises, including, for example, those by Dmitry of Rostov. 
The critical evaluation of the sources and of the essence of the Church reforms began only in the 1850s with the groundbreaking work of several Church historians, Byzantologists and theologians, such as S. A. Belikarov, Apshapov, A. K. Borozdin, N. Gibune, and later E. E. Golubinsky, A. V. Kardashev, Double A. Dmitrievsky and Nikolai F. Kapterev, the latter four were members of the Imperial Academy of Sciences. Research was continued later mainly by Sergei Zenkovsky, a specialist on Russian ecclesiastical culture. Bolobinsky, Dmitrievsky, Kardashev and Kapterev, among others, demonstrated that the rites, rejected and condemned by the Church reforms, were genuine traditions of Orthodox Christianity that had been altered in Greek usage during the 15th–16th centuries, but remained unchanged in Russia. The pre nikonian liturgical practices, including some elements of the Russian Tipikon were demonstrated to have preserved earlier Byzantine practices, being closer to the earlier Byzantine texts than some later Greek customs. Remarkably, the scholars who opened the new avenues for re evaluation of the reform by the Russian Church themselves held membership in the official Church. AV. Kapterev, for instance, was a professor at the Slavic Greek Latin Academy, but took up study of the causes and background of the reforms and of the resulting schism. Their research revealed that the official explanation regarding the old Russian books and rites was unsustainable. Topic. Background As Serge A. Zenkovsky points out in his standard work Russia's Old Believers, the Old Believer schism did not occur simply as a result of a few individuals with power and influence. The schism had complex causes, revealing historical processes and circumstances in 17th-century Russian society. Those who broke from the hierarchy of the official state church had quite divergent views on church, faith, society, state power and social issues. Thus the collective term, "'Old Believers' groups together various movements within Russian society which actually had existed long before 1666–67. They shared a distrust of state power and of the episcopate, insisting upon the right of the people to arrange their own spiritual life, and expressing the ambition to aim for such control. Both the Popovsky and Bespopovsky, although theologically and psychologically two different teachings, manifested spiritual, eschatological, and mystical tendencies throughout Russian religious thought and church life. One can also emphasize the schism's position in the political and cultural background of its time, increasing Western influence, secularization, and attempts to subordinate the church to the state. Nevertheless, the old believers sought above all to defend and preserve the purity of the Orthodox faith, embodied in the old rituals, which inspired many to strive against Patriarch Nikon's church reforms even unto death. In the past the Old Believers movement was often perceived as an obscure faith in rituals that led to the deaths of tens of thousands of ignorant people. Old Believers were accused of not being able to distinguish the important from the unimportant. To many people of that time, however, rituals expressed the very essence of their faith. Old Believers hold that the preservation of a certain microclimate that enables the salvation of one's soul requires not only living by the commandments of Christ, but also carefully preserving church tradition, which contains the spiritual power and knowledge of past centuries. Embodied in external forms, the old believers reject the idea of contents a priori prevailing over form. To illustrate this issue, the renowned Russian historian Vasily Klyuchevsky (1841–1911) referred to poetry. He argued, that if one converts a poem into prose, the contents of the poem may remain intact, but the poem will lose its charm and emotional impact, moreover, the poem will essentially no longer exist. In the case of religious rituals, form and contents do not just form two separable, autonomous entities, but connect with each other through complex relationships, including theological, psychological, phenomenal, aesthetic and historic dimensions. These aspects, in their turn, play a role in the perception of these rituals by the faithful and in their spiritual lives. 
Considering the fact that church rituals from their very beginning were intertwined with doctrinal truth, changing these rituals may have a tremendous effect on religious conscience and a severe impact on the faithful. Nevertheless, centuries of persecution and the nature of their origin have made some old believers culturally conservative. Some old believers consider any pre Nikonian Orthodox Russian practice or artifact as exclusively theirs, denying that the Russian Orthodox Church has any claims upon a history before Patriarch Nikon. However, Russian economic history of the late 19th and early 20th centuries reveals the old believer merchant families as more flexible and more open to innovations while creating factories and starting the first Russian industries. Main differences between the Old Believers and post Nikonian Russian Orthodoxy Old Believers use two fingers while making the sign of the cross the pointer finger straight, middle finger slightly bent while New Style Orthodoxy uses two fingers and the thumb for the sign of cross, the thumb and two fingers are held together at point, two fingers folded. Old ritualists generally say the Jesus prayer with the sign of the cross, while new ritualists use the sign of the cross as a Trinitarian symbol. This makes for a significant difference between the two branches of Russian Orthodoxy, and one of the most noticeable see the picture of Boyarinya Feodosia Morozova above. Old believers reject any changes and emendations of liturgical texts and rituals introduced by the reforms of Patriarch Nikon. Thus they continue to use the previous church Slavonic translation of the Greek texts, including the Psalter, striving to preserve intact the pre nikonian practices of the Russian Church. Old believers only recognize performing baptism through three full immersions, in agreement with the Greek practice, but reject the validity of any baptismal rite performed otherwise for example through pouring or sprinkling, as the Russian Orthodox Church has occasionally accepted since the 18th century. See Oblivancy. Old believers perform the liturgy with seven prosphora, instead of five as in New Rite Russian Orthodoxy or a single large prosphoron, as sometimes done by the Greeks and Arabs. Old believers chant the Alleluia verse after the Psalmody twice rather than the three times mandated by the Nikonian reforms. Old believers do not use polyphonic singing as the new style Russian practice, but only the monodic, unison singing of Zanameni chant. In this respect it represents a tradition that parallels the use of Byzantine chant and pneumatic notation. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Present situation. In 1971, the Moscow Patriarchate revoked the anathemas imposed on the old believers in the 17th century. In 1974, the Russian Orthodox Church outside Russia issued a new kasha revoking the anathemas and asked forgiveness from the old believers for the wrongs done to them. Under their auspices, the first efforts to make the prayer and service books of the old believers available in English were made. Nevertheless, most old believer communities have not returned to communion with the majority of Orthodox Christianity worldwide. Estimates place the total number of old believers remaining as of 2006 as being between 1 and 2 million, some living in extremely isolated communities in places to which they fled centuries ago to avoid persecution. One old believer parish in the United States, in Erie, Pennsylvania, has entered into communion with the Russian Orthodox Church outside Russia, after a split in the congregation. The remainder have continued as old believers. Old believer churches in Russia currently have started restoration of their property, although old believers face many difficulties in claiming their restitution rights for their churches. Moscow has churches for all the most important old believer branches, Rogoskaya Zastava Popovsi of the Belokrinitskaya Hierarchy Official Center, a cathedral for the Novozybkovskaya Hierarchy in Zamorstvorichia and Priobrezhenskaya Zastava where Pomortsi and Fedosivsi coexist. 
Within the old believer world, only Pomortsi and Fedosevsi treat each other relatively well, none of the other denominations acknowledge each other. Ordinary old believers display some tendencies of intra-branch ecumenism, but these trends find sparse support among the official leaders of the congregations. Modern-day old believers live all over the world, having fled Russia under Tsarist persecution and after the Russian Revolution of 1917. Some old believers are still transient throughout various parts of the world today. Significant established old believer communities exist in the United States and Canada in Plamondon, Alberta, Hines Creek, Alberta, Woodburn, Oregon, Erie, Pennsylvania, Erskine, Minnesota and in various parts of Alaska including near Homer in the Fox River area villages of Vaznesenka, Razdalna, and Karkamak Selo, Nikolevske, Beryozivka, Delta Junction, and Kodiak, Alaska Larson Bay area, and on Raspberry Island. Two communities also exist in Sydney, Australia and in the South Island of New Zealand. Communities also have been established in many parts of South America, including Brazil, Uruguay, Bolivia and Argentina, where they moved after having found refuge in China between the 1920s and the 1950s. Old believer communities are also found in Georgia and Kazakhstan. Small hidden communities have been found in the Russian far north, specifically remote areas of Arkhangelsk Oblast and the Komi Republic, and various regions of Siberia, especially concentrated in the areas between the Altai Mountains and Tuva Republic. Perhaps the highest concentration of older established old believer communities, with foundations dating back hundreds of years, can be found concentrated in eastern Siberia, specifically the Transbaikal region in desolate areas of Beriatia and Zabaykalsky Krai. Others, like the Likov family, fled later into the wild to avoid communist persecution. The Lipovans, who live in Romania's Danube Delta, are descendants of the old believers who left Russia in around 1740 to avoid religious persecutions. Conservative old believer population stands at some 3,000 in Bolivia, while that in Alaska is estimated at 2,500. Old believers arrived in Alaska, U.S. in the second half of the 20th century, helping to revive a shrinking Orthodox population. In Estonia, there are 2,605 old believers according to the 2011 census. They live mostly in villages from Mustvi to Omadu and from Nina to Vanya on the western coast of Lake Pipus, and on Pirisar Island. Two old believer missions have been established in Pakistan and Uganda. Old Believer Churches Lipovan Orthodox Old Rite Church Belokrinitskaya Hierarchy, Lipovans Old Pomorian Old Orthodox Church of Fedosevsi Pomorian Old Orthodox Church Pomorian Old Orthodox Church of Lithuania Union of Old Believer Parishes in Estonia Russian Old Orthodox Church Novozybkovskaya Hierarchy Russian Orthodox Old Rite Church Belokrinitskaya Hierarchy Topic See also True Orthodoxy a denominational movement within Eastern Orthodox Church over differences such as ecumenism and calendar reforms since the early 20th century Independent Catholic Traditionalist Catholic Continuing Anglican Movement Confessing Movement Ancient Church of the East a Syrian Nestorian Christian sect founded in 1968 over same similar reasons to split off from Assyrian Church of the East Korvinshchina Likov family Old Believers Latvia <laughs>